Is this thing on? Okay, cool. All right. So in this tutorial, we are going to be tackling motion tracking. This is the clip that we're going to be tracking. And to be honest, it's not that difficult of a shot, but if you're a beginner, then this will definitely get you started. Also, I haven't tracked this footage yet, so I have no idea what kind of issues we might run into, but then it will be a good live problem solving session. Okay, enough talk, let's dive right in. All right, so here we are in Blender, and this is what your default file should look like if you haven't messed it up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna hop over to this editor type and then switch this to movie clip editor. And by the way, you guys can find the this clip uh, in the description, just in case if you wanna follow along. So I'm gonna assume that you have downloaded it and good to go. And you're good to go. Yeah, that's how it's said. Anyway, so I'm just gonna drag and drop this file into this and you'll get this error. Hopefully you won't, I, I keep getting it, but when I do it a second time, it gets loaded up just like this and scroll middle mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out and then middle mouse button to pan around so this is this is pretty simple right so far but okay so before we start tracking there's something we need to do and that is we need to convert this footage into a image sequence uh, uh, it doesn't mean that you know if you just track it with you, you can track it right now but here's the thing uh in future uh, when you're doing some animations or stuff, usually you usually render PNG sequences and then you kind of end up doing the same thing. Also, Blender kind of handles PNG sequences well, but it's up to you. I like converting it into a PNG sequence or a JPEG, whatever. It, it has to be a sequence. You can even go TIFF if you if you have that kind of storage. So with that said, uh, the, the, the second thing that we need to do is we need to go over to the what it's called render settings i guess yeah render settings and go to color management and here's what's happening blender is kind of doing its thing which is you know it's it's it has said this to filmic and this is this is this is what our stranded footage was and th the reason why blender does it is uh, it's defaultly set to filmic because it's well it's it's kind of good with animations and stuff and you know it's also good with aces and wh whatever but that's not what we need while tracking we need our we need high contrast areas and this is kind of doing it kind of desaturating it so we're just going to set it to standard and you see that we get our saturation back i guess and with that said the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the frame rate that we shot this footage at is the same as the project frame rate in this case it isn't so just go and change this to 30. now you might have some junky looking or junky weirdly frame rates for some reason let's assume that you have 28 okay and over here you look and there's there's no 28 so here's what you do you go over to the frame rate and hit custom and then you get this so type in here 28 thousand uh, sorry 2800 and then over here 100 and with that said you get 28 frame rates because you know th this is basic math but in our case it's 30 frames so just hit 30 and you can also drag this out to make sure there's no hidden one over here and the other thing is that uh, the frame rate the total number of frames in this footage it's 210 or technically if you count from zero then it's 309 but yeah whatever uh but the project uh project frame rates are 250 right over here so you, either you can just go over here and put the number or you can just hit sets in frames and that does the job automatically for you all right so with this all said hop over to the compositing tab now you can also do this in the i guess in the what's this movie uh, yeah video sequencer but i like working with nodes so this is what we're gonna do so I'm going to hit use node and then this is what we are introduced. So delete this render layers node by hitting X and then hit shift A and then you can either search movie clip or you can just go to input and then go to movie clip. And since we have already loaded this over here, all we need to do is just click and click over this video icon and then just choose this and then connect this one to the composite one. And if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can just hit control shift and click to get this viewer. And by the way, if you don't have it enabled, you can just go to edit, 
preferences, that's what it's called, add-ons. And then just type in no triangular and there it is. Just tick it and you're good to go. All right, so V to zoom out, Alt V to zoom in. For some reason, my screencast keys aren't working. I turned them on, but whatever. Okay, now that that's set, just go over to the output tab and then just choose a output, where, where you want to output it basically. I have, okay, this is, okay, this is where I'm going to output it. Motion tracking, personal output. I'm just going to name it V1. And make sure that it's PNG. I don't think we need the alpha channel here in this case. So compression, zero, RGB, PNG, all set. And um, all you need to do is just hit render animation. And in this case, it doesn't really matter if it's EV or cycles because we aren't rendering anything from the viewport. So it's gonna render fast even if you are working on a low end PC like me, laptop, sorry, low end laptop like me. So just gonna hit render animation. And yeah, that's rendering. So I'll see you guys when it's done. Okay, so here we are back in Blender. I kind of closed that file, but I didn't save it. If you want, you could have saved the file. That doesn't really matter anymore. So I usually start with a fresh scene. So, you know, fresh start, I guess. You, know, you, you don't have to be so philosophical about it, but whatever. So now that that's there, the first thing that you need to do is just go back to the movie clip editor, which is where all the magic is gonna happen, like it or not and then hit open. And this is where you have to locate where you have rendered your sequence out. Now, usually it will be in the recent tab over here. So just mine is there. If it, if it isn't, then, you know, just locate it from over here, right? You know, you're smart. So hit A once you have located the files and then hit open clip. And it should be there. Yep, there it is. But again, it's kind of saturated, so Let's get a brightness back. All right, standard. There you go. Then, okay. What? Yeah, hell of a difference. Hell of a difference, guys. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to my viewport and my and turn on my screencast keys. Yeah, all right. Now head back to Clip editor. All right, so just to brush up your knowledge again, scroll up, down, up, down to zoom in and out, and then middle mouse button, middle mouse button. Am I going too fast? Middle mouse button to pan around. Yeah, okay, you're a pro now. So, well, if this is the first time watching a motion tracking video or f doing motion tracking, if you're following along, then you are, well, first things first, you're overwhelmed. Well, that's okay. It's, I, I was too, but you know, you kinda, I'll explain everything over here and over here, well, at least I try to. So, but first let's change our frame rate to 30 and you don't have to do this actually, because since it is a sequence, uh, it's frame rate independent. So you can keep it at 24. You can also go to 60 or do some custom shit like 110, 120. It's up to you, but you, you want to hit sets in frames because we want to track the whole sequence. If you want to just track the first half of it, then feel free. It's up to you. Okay, now that that's there. Let's track. So, before actually, you know what? Before actually tracking that, I want to explain to you guys why we need motion tracking, basically. So, okay, don't follow along for this one, okay? So I'm just going to go over here and add in that image. Actually, movie clip, yeah, movie clip. Now, if I hit play, you'll notice that, well, it's very slow, okay? But the other thing that you will notice is that the clip or the original clip is moving, but, <coughs> excuse me, the cube that we have in our scene, it's not. It's It should be sticking there, but it's not. It's just where it is. and kind of looks shitty and the reason for that is well the camera that we're seeing right now is stationary it's not moving whereas the original camera that i filmed with it's moving and that's where motion tracking comes into play and what, what basically happens in motion tracking is that the camera that we have in our 3d software 
tries to mimic the movements, the rotation scale, zooming, whatever it does, and it tries to match it as good as possible. And you know, that's that's basically it. That's what happens BTS behind the scenes. That's what happens. Just wanted to explain to you guys why we need motion tracking. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, I'm just gonna go back to the movie clip editor. And you know, uh if I hit play again, it's kind of not fast. And that's if this happens, then we'll end up using or tracking this scene forever. So what we need to do is we need to load this sequence into our RAM, I guess, or in, yeah, in the, into the system. And we can do that by simply hitting the prefetch button. And that basically just loads in this sequence into the system. And over here at the bottom right corner, you'll notice that the, there's this thing called mem, which stands for memory. And you'll see that it's getting higher. It's increasing, basically. And for some of you, if you're uh, dragging like 800 or 900 frames, uh, this will kind of stop, you know, this will just stop or this will keep on going ahead. But then you'll see that the the purple line is then st it starts fading away. And that's because you have reached your cache limit or your memory. And you can tackle that by just going to edit preferences. And you'll find that in system once it's done loading. Okay, in the system over here, system, sequencer, cache limit, assuming I'm spilling it's cache, right? Probably not. But this is where you get to define how much uh, memory you're giving to Blender. So mine is set to 12 GB. If yours isn't, then you can, you know, if your this thing starts to go berserk, then you can always just come over here and change the settings. Mine is at 12 GB. Feel free to give it whatever you want. But in this case, all we needed was 3GB. So, you know, yay. And once that's done, important thing, hit control S. And let's just save this. Oh, not over here. This future tutorial. But yeah, Blender file. And then I'm going to create another folder in the Blender file section. I'm going to call it tracking. Hit enter. And then I'm going to call it V1. All right. So now that's there. Let's add some tracks now you can um you know do this whole thing uh without even doing any manual effort you can just hit detect features then it will detect features then it control t and this whole thing will be computerized uh ian hubert did an awesome video on that but i like to do it manually so yeah this is what we're going to do now you can add a track over here by clicking add and then just click over here and there you go you have added your first track or what you can do is just, for example, if you want to add a track over here, just have, uh, just zoom into wherever you want to add the track. Holding control, just click on it. And yeah, that, that also adds a track. But, uh, you know, it's very hard to just zoom in here and then just move it. I mean, if you're into it, feel free. But there's an easier way to do that. And that's to go over to this panel. You see this panel over here? Look at my mouse. Look at my mouse. Okay, this panel. <laughs> then click on track. And there you go. You get a zoomed in window of it. And notice that if I make some changes, and by the way, just click and left click hold, and you're good to go. You, you, you're pro now, as I said earlier. And you can notice that it's changing over here in the viewport also. Now, if you want to scale the track, just hit S and scale it up. Yeah, I think this will be fine for today. Now, although I am going to bring this over here at the edge of it, you know. And the reason that I am doing this is because, uh, again, because of contrast over here, we have this whole black logo. And then directly from this point, we shift to a silver kind of thingy. Buttons. It's called buttons. Okay. Yeah, you're smart. I'm not. But yeah, so there's a direct contrast between the areas. So it's Blender, you know, it's easier for Blender to then just, you know, keep the track where it is when we track. If, if we just place a track over here, like over here and then just track it. Yeah, you see, we get an error because Blender, every, it's basically everything is silver. So what do you want to track? That's what Blender is saying. So that's why it's going to go back to the start and by the way you can uh, quickly go back to the start and end of the sequence by just hitting got a shift left arrow to go to the start and shift right arrow to go to the end so let's go to start 
add a key uh, sorry not keyframe track over here place it somewhere over here at the corners and that's why corners are important now you might say that your your wife might say that we should you know take down the corners of the sofa or something it's hurting but you know what don't because it's essential for tracking now now that that's it we need to take a look at this especially the motion model now pattern size is basically pattern and search size is basically how big this should be when you first add it and we also have search size which there's a hidden box over here that we're not seeing we can enable that by hitting alt s wow right awesome but you know this uh this is inside this box is what's blender gonna track and over here inside this bigger box that's what blender is going to search in the upcoming frames or the next frames you don't have don't worry just scale it up if you want but remember that the more you scale it the like the bigger it is the longer it's gonna take to track and then we have motion models and this is like the this is pretty important yeah so location well you want to use location where okay let me start let's you know what let's just go with the fundamentals what are motion models well this is uh of this is a way of telling blender how to track or how to interpret the footage now if if you're just uh, having a shot where you're, you're holding your camera and you're just walking straight ahead you're not rotating you're not scaling or you're not doing anything you're just walking straight ahead then then you would want to use location because the only information that we're getting is location because you're just moving straight ahead that's it now location rotation yeah it's pretty self-explanatory you're moving ahead but you're also looking around with the camera so there you go if, if there's location as well as rotation involved this is what you use location scale again you're going somewhere or you know you're walking straight ahead but then you're zooming into something that's when you use location scale yeah i'm not even going to explain this because come on you know that term this involves all three of this a fine a fine a fine a fine whatever a fine a fine is when your track the, the whatever you're tracking it's kind of skewing or it's stretching you know the track that you're trying to track that's a fun sentence but yeah uh, it's skewing uh, i'm sure you're seeing a uh, footage of that right now in front of your screen so yeah that's what affine is and that's when you use affine perspective is well this is a good example of perspective this whole footage uh, take a look at this uh, like the position of the camera is at the start of the sequence and as i hit as i hit play notice uh, that it goes up directly and there's this huge perspective change from what it was uh, from what it is right now at frame 129 and what it is at frame one so that's that's where you use perspective and another important thing is normalize and what that basically does is uh, if there's uh, the, if there are any light changes in your sequence then you know it basically tells <coughs> excuse me uh, it uh, it basically tells vendor you know what there are light changes but don't let that affect the track don't let that affect the track yeah I pretty sure i said it wrong the first time but yeah that's what it does and rgb so these these are basically your channels that you want to track uh, because you know for blender uh, blender is not blender doesn't see all these colors all it sees is rgb and those are all in black and white formats so you can also tr let me just quickly show it to you guys boy if you were expecting a tutorial will i just show you how to push buttons then you come to the wrong place i want you guys to learn you know then you know be my patreons that's my goal but yeah so over here the track you see we have rgb we have selected rgb all of these three but you can also just select the blue and then track or just the red whichever has the highest contrast because, because contrast areas is what we're looking for that's why we did uh, this whole thing like or else why would we do then you know but anyway that's that and then under tracking settings extra we have weight now weight means how much importance this track is going to carry one means 100 percent Mitch. this track is the best you just give it all you got and then if it's zero then you know what what is this track that's how you that's how blender is going to interpret that and then correlation this means the 
well it means how confident blender is going to be about this track now right now it's at 2.75 which means 75 percent so blender has to be 75 percent sure of this track if it falls below that if it's like 74.99 then the track is gonna stop and blender is gonna tell you yo something's wrong that's what it does i like to keep this at 0.9 so blender has to be 90 percent sure so you know yeah that that works and then margin well read that okay cool uh then other track now this is where we get to do our tracking because if we play you'll notice that it's it's not tracking it's, it's it's well it's not tracking it's doing everything else but tracking so this is where we get to track now this means track backwards and you'll you, you, we will use it once we track you know from the end of the sequence and this is like track backwards but not the whole sequence just track one frame backward this is saying track one frame uh no my bad uh, my bad this means just track one frame back this means track everything from backwards this means track everything from the start of the footage to the end and this means just track one frame ahead all right cool now we want to track the whole thing out right now so we can either press this button or we can just hit Control T, which is which I like the shortcut, and you'll notice that it's tracking, and boom, we have encountered our first problem, which is, well, it kind of shifted. Take a look at this. Uh, keep a close eye over here, and if you you know you notice like this in this case, you know the track is just going out of place, but yeah over here but you kind of want this to be in the middle so just hit this lock icon next to clip display that basically centers it the whole time so yeah it shifted over there so probably not a good track so i'm just gonna hit x to delete that and go back to the start of the frame instead let's go and track this yeah this this microsoft logo fire microsoft bring it to the edge scale it up a tad bit yeah, that looks fine. Then it control T and it has encountered its first problem. Now usually you don't have to do much, you know, sometimes all you gotta do is just increase this and I'm just gonna hit this so that it's always centered and track and it does the job. Just gonna keep doing that. So remember back when I said that this is a pretty easy footage to track i take my words back because it's it's being a pain in the ass at the moment and okay so i have kind of locked this okay so once you're happy with your track i am not because it shifted so i'm just going to delete this again go back to the start of the sequence and let's just track this logo first you know what let's just track the logo let's track hp okay Right over here, scale it up, hit control, I make sure that it's centered. That's that's how I like to roll. Boy, this is causing a lot of problems. Mm, something's wrong. Okay, it's shifting a lot. And there you go. You wanna know why it's not working so well? It's because we have selected location. Should be perspective. You see, so motion models, super important. This happened completely like yeah thank god it happened now if we go ahead and drag this back again we won't be disappointed because now we are perspective we're using perspective bitch yeah look at that now look at that boom perspective that's that's perspective location suck that oh you know, this is getting perverted every minute whoa so yeah we tracked it and i just locked it again so if you're super happy with your track which i am at the moment i'm very happy very happy then what you want to do is when i hit ctrl l to lock it because if you don't then you know if you might end up doing something to your track or just moving it along right so just hit ctrl l and that locks it and with that locked you can't do anything other than deleting which is also bad but you know this means that you don't trust yourself. Okay, so now that that's there, and I am at the back of the sequence, what I'm gonna do is track backwards. Now, what should I track? Let's track Microsoft again. 
have to scale it up a bit. Move it right over here at the edge. And now this time I'm gonna hit Control Shift T, which means drag backward. And it's smooth as a butter could be. Expensive butter though. Cheap butters just aren't good. Okay, and you notice that it's kinda going slow compared to the one that we did before this, but who are you to complain, you know? It's going good, that's all you care about. That's all I care about. Mm. All right, perfect. Control L to lock it. And I am happy as a kite. Now let's drag this logo again, this time with perspective. Remember, perspective, because there's a lot of perspective change in this. You know, don't be idiot like me and just drag it with location. All right, so now that that's it, make sure that this is set, right? It's centered, Control T. Will it track? Yes, it does. Whew. Awesome. And important information that I forgot to tell you guys. Blender needs at least 8 tracks per frame. And yeah, that's the rule. Like, you can just track 3 points and then hit go over here, solve, which I won't explain. I'll do that in a bit. Then it just hit solve camera and expect a 0.1 solver. That just won't, it won't work. So, per frame, we need 8 tracks. Cool? All right. Now, I want to track Microsoft Edge. No, I won't. That's a shit browser. It doesn't deserve to be tracked. Mm, what else? Anything with high contrast? Uh, yeah, let's try GeForce. Which is... Yeah, let's track it. You know what? But I am going to get... Bring this over here at the edge. Cool. Control T. And it's going smooth as a butter. Did it stop? Oh god. Whoa, so I'm just gonna increase this search area. Let's see if it goes. Yeah, it goes. Yeah, sometimes all you gotta do is just increase the search size. Okay, so four tracks down, four to go. I usually end up tracking ten. Uh, let's track Substance Designer. Yeah, it's a good thing to track, you know. No one tracks Substance Designer before. No one has ever done that. You guys are the first to do that, you know. Scale it up. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's gonna work though. Let's see. Yeah, I thought so. There's just too much motion blur. Oops. Control three. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother tracking. Just it's way too blurry. For my test. All right, now let's track a letter. Okay, let's let's track. Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. Let's tag that bastard. Scale up. Hit Control T to track. No, nah, yep, nope. It won't. Just too blurry. I think this symbol right over here, the sound symbol, it's good. I'm just gonna scale it up. Press it at the edge. Yeah, over there. Control T to track. Ah, God. Let's try scaling it up a bit. Mm, yep, loving it. Oh, I think, uh, let's see if it went perfect. Yeah, I think it did. Okay, perfect. Okay, so five tracks down. Way to go, guys. We are making progress. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's track, let's track something from here. Although I think that's going to jump out. And you know what? It's time to explain these two. Because... Yeah, I'm, I just went back to the last frame. I want you guys to think that I'm just showing you guys how to push buttons. Which is kind of what I'm doing, but you know. Nah. Picking this corner. Right over here. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere like this. Yeah, perfect. Control shift T. It's tracking, it's tracking. Oh, it's tracking and boom. There you go. So... So let's say that you're happy with this track, but as you can see, it didn't track because it got out of frame, which means this point, this area that we're tracking is is not in the frame. That's what it, that's why it got, you know, we get that red error. But let's say that you want to keep this information that we tracked, but you want to tell Blender that don't track like from this frame to the start of the footage, but keep the information that we've tracked. And 
this is what clear is for now this this kind of symbol is pretty self-explanatory like they both mean that you know keep whatever you've tracked tra keep that but whatever you're tra but whatever is in the next frames like in the upcoming frames don't track it but whatever you've, we've tracked before just keep it so this arrow is showing us the left symbol it means that whatever is behind or behind this which is you know this is going left and whatever is behind this is gonna be kept and whatever ahead of this is just delete it or just don't track it and this means the opposite and you guys aren't that dumb so press that it control l now there you go so and this is this is gonna end up like this but basically it's not contributing and that's why i'm gonna delete it yeah but just wanted to show you what what those button what those buttons do and i did a very bad job at it i can just tell you guys hate me you guys hate me this was a tutorial it's it's helpful all right okay what else what else is there to track uh this thing i guess yeah, let's try this end of P. Let's see if it's let's see if it's trackable. So far, so good. Hmm, yeah, going good. Going really good. Jesus, that's good. Look at the swirling caterpillars. It's just so satisfying to watch. That's one of the reasons why I do the tracking myself. Not that anyone's there to help me but even if there was i'd do it i'd still do it myself because it's satisfying to watch these little shits yeah look at them beautiful beautiful track five frames down and another important thing that you should be knowing is that you want to have or you want to track things which are which have a reasonable distance between them and that way blender knows like see if uh, over here we track this and then we track this one and in real life it's kind of above and ahead of this so this kind of tells blender okay you know what there's something over here and uh, which is ahead also ahead but also at a height like a different height from this one because all these are on the same plane i mean this these buttons are kind of on, on i like they have a bit of height from these guys like this plane but this one's just way it has it's way ahead of them also it's taller than then i guess yeah doing a very bad job at this but i don't think i could do any better either so in this case it really won't matter because all we're focusing on is the laptop but if you were tracking a room or something then you might want to track different parts of the room all right okay so with that out there let's track let's track uh maybe the corner no Mm, let's track this windows icon again we're tracking windows we are window boys that's the that's the weirdest name i've ever heard i'm gonna bring this over here at the edge is my voice sounding like asmr shit no no i'm not doing that crap right now Control d to track it going good perfect there you go buddy perfect buddy oh my god i love you buddy perfect so so far we have one two three four five six seven tracks okay we're just gonna track track two more now i won't track chrome oh it's not on right now i just thought the chrome was running right now because then that would slow the hell down this whole process i mean it sucks the ram like nothing it's it's like that app was specifically made to suck every processing power of your laptop now this one i'm not guaranteed that it's going to be a good track but let's see it's time to prove it no, no not it's not a good track oh let's go at the end of the footage to see if there's more information available and we can of course track this area but at the start it's not there so hmm so i guess all we have to do is track something over here which is out of focus so remember if you're tracking something try to eliminate motion blur and also track with a good camera i'm using my sister's camera which is good because i have no other camera so i have to say it's good Control shift d to track boy that's going well until that happened 
let's try scaling it up. Control T. Okay, no problem. Let's just scale it up again. Control T. Okay. This is why I I didn't drag the left arrow button because it's super super blurry. Like way too blurry. Looks like we might end up dragging Chrome. Might as well just drag the shit. Let's drag over there by doing control T. Scale it up. Or not. Up to you guys. Then it's control shift T because we're at the end of the sequence. And watch it. Watch it do its thing. Zoop, 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 zoop. Yep. So we have eight tracks and that blender is satisfied with you. But you know what? Let's track a few more points. Oh, okay, we're gonna track Cinema 4D. Yep, we're tracking C4D, guys. I am so dumb. I'm sounding so dumb. Whew, okay. I think... I think it did a pretty good job, Blender. Blender, you, you're the best. Blender is literally one of... it. It's one of the best tracking softwares, actually. It, it's good. Although I think BF Track is doing a much better job, especially in the orientation part of that. But you know what? Blender is good too. So, 9 track down, 1 left to go. Will this work? Nah, it's getting too blurry. Let's track N. Yeah, let's track this. Scale it up, push it down a bit. Control shift D again to track because we're at the end and it's just look at how good it is. It just let's try and scale, ah, it's Jesus Christ. Mm, the volume button no because we already have a track in this part. Let's track. I'm thinking of dragging one of these dots, but just because they are so close to each other, Blender might confuse. It will jump. It will jump. And yeah, I kind of forgot to explain keyframe, right? So I'll just explain that in a quick second. So right now what Blender is doing is when it's tracking, right? It's, let's take this for example. So this is the first part. And when we hit play, Blender is, as, as it's tracking, it's referring to that first frame that we tracked. All right, so that's 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 what keyframe means. But previous frame means that it's gonna track. Let's say that we moved ahead and we are at 50, 50th frame. So it's gonna refer to the 49th frame. And when it's, you know, that's how it goes. So it doesn't refer to the start of the frame, like the initial reference point, but it refers to the point where it was in the previous frame. So at some cases, uh, previous frame is really helpful, but in this case, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Just should have explained it. Uh, what else is there to track? I think we need something over here in this area. You know what? Let's just track edge for high, which is the weirdest shit I've ever said up until now. Yeah, I I, under, I understand if you want to leave this tutorial. I want to too. Trust me. And motion blur. God, I hate motion blur. It's like, you know, you have a good footage, you have a good idea, but you have motion blur also. So, just, just screws everything up. That's why I need a DSLR, I guess. Phone cameras just aren't good. I mean, iPhone does have a good camera, and this one did made it through, by the way. But yeah, so 10 tracks. Yeah, we kind of did a good job. So once you're finished and once you are confident that you have eight tracks and all these tracks are good, then it's time to head over to the solve panel. And this is where Blender does its calculations and stuff. And then it gives us a solve error. And that solve error has to be less than 0.5. And when it's point less than 0.5, it means that you're good to go. If it's above it, like 0.6 or 7 okay but when it's one two or like say 100 then yeah you're you're screwed so planar track we haven't done any planar track yet but just in case if you want to do planar track this is what you'll end up clicking 
Now solve, now this is what we are interested in. So I'll just quickly explain what all this means. Now tripod, it means that if you if you shot this on a tripod, then you know tell this to Blender, then that will solve the camera in accordance to that. Keyframe, well, keyframe A and B. Now what does this mean? Now, you know, you want to tell Blender or basically you input in two values here, the two different uh, points in time where you are confident that your track is super cool right so in this case it could be 1 and 13 now usually you want to uh, have a whole lot of difference between them like you can say it's 1 and then you can just directly jump to 180 or 190 something like that just it has to be distant from each other and this helps the solve but you can also tell blender to do it or just choose keyframes automatically which is what we're going to end up using so that's that and then refine and also let's this part now if you know stuff like focal length or sensor width or any of this stuff over here that you know of your camera then it's it's about high time to use these values all right uh focal length is i guess in here yeah focal length i never know what my focal length is because i'm using my uh, as I said, I'm using my sister's camera. I do not know what its focal length is. I could Google it, but I'm too lazy for it. So if you know any of this information, K1, K2, the K twins, sensor width, focal length is important. If you know that, it's time to input in, but I don't. And for someone, if you don't know it, then it's time to it. Focal length, K1 and K2. And what this basically means is that when solving, Blender is going to assume the focal length for you and you know it sounds like assume it's going to do a very bad job but no it actually does a pretty good job at it all right so you want to hit focal length k1 and k2 now k1 k2 some camera properties i never owned a dslr or any of those fancy cameras so i don't know what it means i could google it but as i said too lazy for it but if you are a photographer or you just own a camera then you probably might know that but if you own a camera then you probably won't be hitting this probably go over here and just input you'll be one of those cool kids you know who's inputting the values and never defining anything but we're going to refine this and now it's time to hit solve camera i'll get to this in a bit all right so not yet let's just get a good solver first all right you guys with me one two three okay it's letting its keyframes go 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 okay selecting it's selecting still selecting it takes it takes it takes it it's time you know okay selecting <gasps> 36 that's as bad as it gets boy now you might think okay you know what we need to do this whole thing again and again but sometimes you just have to hit this solve motion solve camera motion again and it usually if you did four or five times it usually gets a good error error solve error that's what you get so 36 super bad but let's see if hitting this twice does make a difference 42 it did make a difference but in a bad way so let's hit this again All right, 53, it just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? I think we should just, yeah, I'm gonna refine my focal length, my K-twins and my optical center. I shouldn't have said this is not such a difficult shot. Guys, it is a very difficult shot. And if you are following along and if we do get a solve error, then you are a pro. 50, well, now this is where you kind of have to do the cleanup. So I'm just going to pull up a window over here. And under this, I'm going to go to the, I guess it's, I never used this. Uh, graph editor, or dope shit, I suppose. Yeah, and then under dope shit, I'm just going to go to, where is it? Where is it, where is it? I don't think it's dope shit. Yeah, it's not dope shit. I think it's graph editor. and boom all right so this is where you do it uh movie clip editor 
and under tracking make sure that it's set to a track otherwise you know this is how it end up looking uh, if yeah this is where you probably are right now then just hit graph and yeah that took a while for me to find but yeah so this red line is where it's all going to hell also this blue line like what the hell is wrong with this so you could go ahead and fix these things uh i sometimes go over there but what i am gonna do is i'm gonna delete a few tracks so we can get the information of these tracks over here in the clip display and generate info and now you can see all the errors that these guys are showing now i think this one is 47 just hit a this this is just bad 50 jesus so let's try deleting this one and then let's hit solve again this might make a difference and yeah that's and <laughs> that's kind of how this thing works so from 53 to 0.2 this is good this is good just save your file and thank god for that ha huh. so this is kind of usually my workflow you know i never uh, so you, you notice that it took me a while to just go over here and graph because i don't spend much time over here the usual way to do that or which is what i end up doing is just you know deleting a few points and then just solving again or hitting the solve button multiple times until i get the result you know so yeah so point two is super good if you're following along if you followed along you got this you i think you're happy i guess you're happy yeah you're a champion you're a pro good I guess this is going to be your first scene which is difficult let me yeah it was difficult i'm not gonna lie because there was motion blur in it um, and was, yeah motion blur kind of screwed a lot of things but we got a solve error of point two which is super cool so control s to save again make sure this is not a tree and now it's time to set things oh so just drag up a window like this just like this and then choose the upper one as the 3d viewport and i'm just going to select everything and just hit delete because now it's time to set set our own scene so under scene setup just hit setup tracking scene and now if you just hit o or zero sorry you will see that a camera is added and i think it's the floor is oriented quite well yeah but anyway, now this is where all these functions come. So set origin, floor, wall, what are these? Well, you want to tell Blender where the origin of the, uh, where the where you want the origin of the scene to be and how, how you want uh, the scene to be oriented. Now, in this case, it kind of is good. Like, I don't know how it happened, but just in case, uh, just select three points, all right? and just hit floor and now it is way too huge all right so then just select two points go over to the sets you see this whole distance thing just type two and just hit set scale now it's small but you see that it's kind of you know now it knows that this is the floor i mean it knew all uh, at the start also it was kind of oriented well but i think that was by accident uh usually it doesn't happen like that all right but now something's wrong with it and it's i mean the x and y axis are well but sorry but first let's set up the origin so please choose any point that you want to be the center of this scene and after you've clicked it just hit set origin and now this is centered there now it's time to align it properly so anything above it like this is the origin and any point above it should be the y axis so just go over here and once you're select once you've selected this just hit set y-axis and it kind of did a bad job that's okay uh, or what you can do is just select the camera hit r z and just rotate it your okay rotate it yourself until you feel it's right okay so i'm just gonna try to match this line i think it it did a good job then again its origin is off so i'm just gonna hit click on this path uh this track here which is i think the ninth track that we tracked and then just hit set origin and yeah that's i think that's good so if we hit play 
which I did in just slow. Yeah. S mm. Yeah, it's sticking, right? It's staying there and this is what motion tracking is. This is what basically, that's what it is. And now it's the X and Y axis are a bit off, right? But you know, you can always just manually adjust it. But the big, big part of this whole tutorial was to get a good solver and the problem solving that you have to do. Because as at the start of the uh, solve, when we hit the solve button, we kind of got some wanker results like 23, then 43, then 53, if I'm not wrong. And then we ended up getting a point to result. And as you can see, this is good. This is super good. And that's basically it. Uh, and if you look over here, we have these two layers. And if you are not familiar with layers at all, don't worry. I am going to be making a tutorial on it. And also, Jacob Holiday has a good tutorial on it. So be sure to check his channel. But uh, in this tutorial, I don't think we need this background layer. Uh, because you know what? Let just hit render for a while. I'm just going to hit save because I don't think I don't want to lose progress because that's obvious. Then I'm going to switch it to cycles and make sure to uh, choose GPU compute if you have a GPU. And when, when you hit render, you get this whole. Oh, this is what you get. And because this light just isn't powerful enough. So I'm just going to up it up. Something like that. Yeah, that looks good. And okay, well, what is this? Well, this is happening because we are, you know what? I'll just show you guys. I'm just gonna go over to this and I'm just gonna set this at 20 and I'm gonna hit render image. All right, it's, that's fast. Also, we have a shepherd shadow pass, which is cool, but yeah, that's cool, but I, I don't know. So, this is what ends up happening. Uh, and you, we kind of track the whole scene, and here we are. But where's, where's the laptop? Where's the whole scene? It is there, and it did get composited. But the thing is, we haven't enabled transparency yet. So, let's head over to the, uh, what is this called again? Render properties. <laughs> yeah, film transparent now we get that so let's hit render again and now you notice that we don't get that gray background anymore because we just hit transparent that's what it one button you know it changes your life it actually doesn't you know it's, don't fall for that crap and there you go your first VFX scene. If this was your first time tracking, then congratulations, you've done a good job. But as you can see, we are getting some weird issues right over here. And this is basically happening in the compositing section. So all this is all too much for you guys, but don't worry. Just select everything which is over here, like uh, apart from this door. You know what? Let's just delete everything. Just select, hit A, X. All right. And now I'm going to show you guys how to set this whole thing up from scratch. So hit shift A and add in a composite node. So anything that you hook to this node will get composited, will get rendered. Is that what it means? That's what it means. <laughs> Is that what it means? That's, uh, whatever. Then shift A and then uh, search for render layers. And this node basically, uh, okay, uh, whatever that was. This node basically contains the information or the rendered information from this whole thing. I'm just going to turn this off. And now we want this to be overlaid on top of our footage. So shift A, search movie clip. Bring it up. It's already selected. If it's not, then you just go over here and select it. And now we want this to be on top of this. And we can do that with an alpha over node. So shift A, search ALPHA alpha over. And now, if you're smart, you'll probably end up doing something like this, like, boom, okay, you know what? Boom, boom, because you know, you want this to be on top of this, and then let's hook it up to this. And if you're even smarter, you'll, you know, you'll do this, control shift click. 
and yeah and you're you're like okay what's happening why isn't it working it is working but the problem here is with the alpha over note you see you're thinking that this is the foreground and this is the background but it kind of is the opposite of it the bottom one is the foreground and the top one is the background and if you enable that they get this but okay where's the shadow well it is there uh but it's kind of in a different layer so if i were to just uh, duplicate this one shift g and then instead of i want we want the shadow first then the cube and then we want both of them to be on top of the movie clips so let's just add this quickly and then i'm gonna add just duplicate this thing right here make sure that this one goes to the top this one to the bottom and then let's just view it or we do this oh well oh i think did we connect this we did and the problem is that it actually I don't think it got rendered that's I think so I think so that's the problem here uh, either way either way uh, it doesn't really matter if this isn't working at all because we don't need this shadow layer because we are gonna be you just gonna be rendering this at in, the, in a single layer so just go over to the background and just hit delete and now we only have one layer which is the foreground so if you hit render it now uh just bring this uh, sh uh this ground from foreground to from background to foreground and okay you're like okay what kind of difference did that make well uh click this filter icon and enable render hold out and indirect and now you notice that this whole layer was set out to be a holdout layer and it's uh this whole options are a tutorial it's it's for a different tutorial itself you know i just can't explain it then this will go a whole long it actually is going a whole long a whole lot of i didn't plan on making it such a long tutorial but either way also move this just delete that let's add another light point light whatever let's just hit gpx to move it along and for some reason it got got added over here just like this delete and now if we hit render we're getting this select the light the light properties hit 200 or maybe a lot 500 yeah so you get the gist and if you think that okay this this whole thing is you know it's the opacity of it is kind of low then just click over, uh, click your camera go over to the camera properties and under alpha where you have added the background images under background images alpha just increase it up and now we get the whole thing back and you kind of did it and yeah i think that's it you know you can edit this whole thing and if you're wondering why this is showing a shadow and that's because under the object data properties under visibility we have shadow catcher enabled so if it was disabled and if we had rendered then we'll get this but since it's enabled we get a shadow and now now is where the fun part of the tutorial comes where we try to import in a dancing guy that you just saw at the start of the video so i'm just gonna save this and i'm, I'm just gonna uh, head over to that part of this tutorial so if you wanted to learn motion tracking then sure then i think you're done that, that i'm not going to talk about motion tracking from now on uh this is it thank you for watching i hope i did a good job uh, i don't know i think i could have done better but yeah you know that this is it uh this is motion tracking like it or not and i'm sure there are more good tutorials out there talking about motion tracking this was just how i do motion tracking in my workflow so yeah bye bye i guess but if you want to stick around and see how i did the dancing guy then yeah here we go 
All right, so this is Mixamo, and it's basically a free website where you can download animated characters or you can even upload your own character and then rig it and then give it some awesome cool looking animations. So this is the website from which we're gonna be downloading this guy. And it's all you need to do is just sign in and that's it. You know, it's a, it's free. So a uh, quick, uh, I guess, I don't think it, that it's hard, that hard to look at. <laughs> uh this is the this is the characters menu where all of the available characters that are in the library of adobe and you have access to all of this uh i used crypto because i don't know i just kind of got this black panthery feeling from it but yeah you can use whatever you want and once you're done selecting your character just go over to the animation tab and then over here in the search bar just search dancing or whatever you want actually i encourage you to just you know just don't follow just don't follow along blindly just you know use your own animation it's fun that way i ended up using this one i suppose yeah so once you're once you like it uh, like a sort of style or animation that you want then just click on it and then you'll see that the character that you selected is doing it now you have a bunch of settings over here i i just trimmed uh, trimmed down the whole animation uh, you'll see that this is quite long i think it goes like seven uh 700 more than 700 frames yeah okay nine nine okay wow that's almost thousand uh, so that's how long the whole animation could last and if you remember if you remember our whole sequence was only of 110 frames so i just ended up trimming it down i kept this at zero i think we can just type a number here zero and then just pulled it back now it's up to you you know if you if you have tracked your own footage then you can use this you can change or just use whatever frame the number of frames you want it's up to you and just play around with the settings because this isn't a mixamo tutorial it's more about motion tracking but either way once you're done with that just hit download and then this dialog box appears so make sure that you're exporting is or downloading it as an fpx okay and you have unity and your collad collade i suppose collada yeah uh, this is also, uh, I don't know, just go with FBX, that's what I chose. And with skin, it's up to you. Frame rate 30 frames, yeah, that's because that's the frame rate that we're rendering it at. And keyframe reduction, just leave it to none because we already have trimmed it over here, all right? And once that's done, hit download and it will start downloading. I have already downloaded, so I won't be downloading it again because that doesn't just make sense. All right, so now I'm just gonna open a new window over here. By the way, this is how I'm saving my recordings. Look, look at this. The namings. Just weird. Alright. So, this is where it all gets downloaded. Maybe this is where normally stuff should download unless you have changed the settings uh, in Chrome. But yeah. So, I'm just gonna copy it. It's just, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna cut it and put it to my 3D models. So I'm just, I already have a dancing guy, I guess. I'm just gonna type dancing guy two. There you go. And just paste it over here. Okay, and now I'm just gonna keep cancel over here. And now this is where we left off, so I'm just gonna delete this cube because we don't need it anymore. And this, I'm just gonna edit it GY so that it's in line with here. Again, this isn't aligning properly, but you know, doesn't really matter in this case. I'm just gonna pull this GY. Yeah, that looks fine. And I'm just gonna name this one as the shadow, such a D. Catcher CAT, CHR, okay, all right. Just double checking spelling mistakes. Now, for some reason, you just can't bring in your fbx file like this all right i don't know why it should be like that but it's not so I'll, so what you have to do is just go over to file import and then choose fbx and now just look at wherever it's you downloaded it or then for if you're like me organized like not some not completely organized but you know somewhat then you would have made a folder and pasted it somewhere uh, it's, it was dancing guy though i think it's yeah this is where it is and then just hit input fpx and it will take its time 
right now it's lagging it means it is taking look at here that's taking time um that means it's working and my laptop's fan is it's doing its thing where it doesn't want me to record nice tutorials Ah, uh, there you go. So we have our guy. Then it's he's kind of small. That's all right. Let's just uh, click the armature, and if you try to scale it, it will scale. So no rocket science over there. Then the controls are super simple here. G, and now that I see my screencast keys are well, they're doing their thing again. So make sure that you have selected the armature. Then it G, Y. All right, I think I'm gonna scale him down a bit. Just gonna go to the extreme mode by hitting Alt Z. Should be, yeah, there it is. So I want him to start dancing around. Uh, maybe it's G X to just bring him over here slightly. G Y, just slide those somewhere over here. Yeah, I think this looks fine. All right, let's let's hit render and see what we're getting. All right, super cool, 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 cool. We have our guy, which is cool. All right, so this is where you wanna kind of do your thing, or you can follow along. That's up to you. Since I want this to be on the render view, I'm just gonna. Place it right here, and this is where I'm gonna be viewing my render. I'm gonna turn off the overlays. Actually, not because then this whole thing goes. Okay. And I'm just doing this because I have to set the lighting now. And now it's now is a good time to talk about lighting. You notice uh, that this we are getting kind of sharp shadows over here. It means that the light is coming from over here, from right to left. And I know that because I live there. So yeah, I know that it's that simple so point light it's not just gonna cut it so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the foreground there so that when I add the light it gets it just gets added over there instead of me going back and then just putting it there and I'm gonna add a area lamp or light then just control Z to pull it up G X to bring it along here or instead my bad I just I, I could just add a Sun um, but you know what area light yeah just gonna go with the area just for tutorial sake cares if I'm wrong in this one I am wrong at like most other thing most of the time I'm wrong and I am gonna just double tap R so that you know you get this freehand rotation and there you go so you notice that nothing is coming over here so let's bump up the light let's say 500 nothing 5000 maybe oh that it's showing something and we need to turn on the shadow catcher for this one oh this is just too much okay uh, let's let's go with 4000 I guess yeah so this is kind of matching yeah but we need to rotate it a bit I suppose to G not rotate just bring it over here so notice that now this is changing okay kind of like that the shadows the kind of match I suppose uh, just gonna hit R now remember, we have to match the softness of the shadows and not the, you know, how, yeah, yeah that's what you match, just the softness and you're good to go. Alright. And now another problem that we should be tackling is uh, this part over here, because since this is a shadow catcher and it's extending all the way through here, the, the shadow will be will be appearing over here as well but here's the thing our laptop is only over here like be, be beyond this point it ends like i don't know why i'm explaining so much like this is pretty basic stuff so i'm just gonna keep it over here and over there we have a uh bevel kind of kind of thingy you know it's beveled over there it's a curved edge so just gonna first select it, extrude it downwards, then go to edge select mode. I could have added a level modifier, but nah. And then just bevel it. 
you know what i think we'd get a better look if we were at the last trim so shift to the last trim there you go so now we are going to get a better look so making sure that this edge is selected and nothing else Control b to bevel it something like that would do the trick and then i'm just going to select this edge and maybe or i think i'm just going to undo and I'm just going to bring this edge ahead. Now this is clearly not what I planned on doing. But this is how I go about solving these cases. Such as this. You know. You gotta make sure that everything is perfect. And look at him. He's not perfect. But yet we're using him. And that's just bad. Now I am going to just pull him back a bit. Because I'm afraid that he's going to fall it's gonna fall yeah, I think this looks nice now notice that we are getting this this edge thing so let's fix that I think the problem lies over here so G and I think in the X direction we just need to push it I think it's gone yeah you know what I'm just gonna leave this because you know it's a tutorial or otherwise I would spend a hell of a lot of time rendering this and usually rendering it in passes to make it color match and stuff but yeah this is it so now if we hit render just gonna save it just gonna disable this uh, I am gonna make sure that I uh, this is up to you also right so this this is the stuff that you should be doing as well go to performance and if you have a GPU then just type in 256 by 256 because earlier when we hit render we get we were getting the small kind of pixelated squares they were rendering and that's because it, this was the tiles were set to 64 but now it's 256 by 256 so that's cool so let's hit render for the last time and see what we're getting okay looks good now again uh, this whole line is coming along, but that's okay. I think for this, the purpose of tutorial, I think it's looking good. And it's already rendered, and this is it. Now, if you want to make sure that this guy just doesn't fall off over somewhere over here, then I would recommend going over to the viewport. Oh, sorry, in the viewport, just click on view and hit viewport render animation. And make sure that you have a path selected over here, such as I'm just going to click and go to dancing or oh, sorry tracking this is the uh, hit i to add a new folder and i'm just going to type in test output oh test output where is it v1 and then just hit viewport render animation it will render the whole sequence out oh, but i'm just going to play it over here making sure that it's it's being played if it falls then we'll know all right cool so i think this is it this is how i ended up making this whole thing and although this guy is really not the part of it and don't worry if this thing doesn't show up in the render, this whole armature thingy, right? So yeah, this is it. This is how I do motion tracking and this is how I added the guy. And this is what's happening, BTS. So if you want to get rid of the white edges, if you're getting any, then you probably click this. I'm just going to this. And now, yeah, I would do a bit of color matching over here. And this isn't matching up because we try to play the animation. If we go to first frame, then this would match up. It would right uh, i don't know i don't understand why it's not oh that's because we rendered it at a different frame so i'm just gonna hit render again just to show you guys that we are doing everything correctly yep here we go now yeah uh the light the color it's not matching up and this looks kind of fake but this really wasn't the point of this tutorial so i am going to be making a tutorial on how to match your cg plate to your background because i released a background video of my never bitch ever choose <laughs> and 
most of you thought that the whole laptop thingy was real like it wasn't cg so yeah so i'm gonna be making a tutorial and if you want to like you can render it at 128 that's all right if you have a higher processing unit or what you can do is just go to the passes tab over here and then just hit denoising data and then just add in a denoise node get over here and then instead of image to image you use noisy image to image then denoising normal to normal and then the denoising albedo to denoising albedo and with that setup you can just go and render it at 20 frames and it will look as if it was rendered at 128 so yeah that is really it that's that's how it was made guys thank you so much for watching if you like my tutorials which i am going to be making more you can support me on patreon and if you do end up following along and add some awesome character then send it to my instagram i love to have a look at it you know stuff like that and uh, i also have a discord server links all the links to what i am talking what are in the description so you know feel free to check out the discord server there it's there it's a small community as i keep saying but it's increasing all right hoping that it's gonna increase one day it's nothing to be proud of but you know whatever but yeah so this is me and i am going to be making a fun tutorial about card magic in the next week or something like that yeah so stay tuned for that all right then until next time be infinite